go to the light of the earth There was people dancing, people singing Om Shanti Om Om Shanti Om I put on my fisherman pants and I left the city Left it for some more Shanti There was freedom waving, holding out some more Shanti Oh, oh Shanti oh, oh And in the times of silence in my head Open to the emptiness that only sees everything as grace. Let's open to the emptiness. Let's open to togetherness of all Shanti. Seasons change but we are here The stars will spin but will remain The earth will shake and the seas will soar The world may end but will remain in all shine Om Shanti. Good afternoon to this wonderful journey that we're going to go on this afternoon. Welcome to the Brahma Kumari's Kukri demo. I think many of us in our many different ways love to allow the creative energies to flow. And more and more we've realized in the world that the way we eat is what we become. So there's been a lot of attention being placed on eating healthy food. But the uniqueness of the Brahma Kumari's cookery demo is we highlight the whole aspect of not just eating pure and healthy food, but also to be able to maintain the right consciousness. Because we truly believe that in our journey as meditators, people who want to create a powerful state of mind, it is very, very essential that we create a high, powerful state of consciousness whilst we cook. 
I think more and more when we look at the state of the world today, we look at the energy of matter that is out there. It has become more and more apparent and real need that everything that we put into our body is filled with high frequency energy because that energy will lift the being and lift the energy of the body and we will have healthy bodies and powerful minds. So this afternoon, we have a wonderful journey once again through all our centers. Today, we're going to go into the Eastern Cape and then we're going to go to Mpumalanga and then we're going to come into Gauteng. And so we're going to cover the beautiful energies of understanding consciousness whilst cooking and having pure, tasty, delicious food. So a very, very warm welcome to you all. For those of you who've joined us for the very first time, enjoy this journey with us. And you'll notice that our style of this cookery demo is just not that you get a recipe, but I would like you to take the time to be part of the experience. Because the aim of these cookery demos is not just to give you a recipe, but to give you an experience so that we become aware that cooking is a whole experience. It's not about just having the right ingredients, but having the right atmosphere, having the right energy, having the right connection, so that that creative piece of time when we cook, we feed our beings with high energy. So it's a wonderful afternoon together. And we're going to first go to the Eastern Cape today. So I'm going to knock at the door of our center in Port Elizabeth, where Sister Belinda is waiting for us. And Sister Gail is there to help her record this moment powerfully. So Sister Belinda, we have all come from all over South Africa and around South Africa to our center in Port Elizabeth. Knock, knock, knock. Here we go, a warm welcome to you, Sister Belinda. I can see the kitchen is all fully ready and it looks all wonderful. Welcome. Thank you very much, Sister Dipti, and good afternoon to everyone. And uh, welcome to Kwabeja. Oh, we yeah. Welcome to Port Elizabeth. We are Kwabeja. I was trying very hard. I just, it was quite difficult to pronounce, yeah. <laughs> So, um, yes, and um, lovely to be with you all this afternoon. And um, this afternoon, I'm going to do a vegan recipe um, because I am actually plant based. And so I encourage people to uh, experiment with their most loved recipes and turn them into vegan recipes, which is what I've done with this recipe. So without further ado, I'm going to show you how to cook Neely's chicken. So I'm sure you've all got uh, the recipe. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put two tablespoons. I'm using coconut oil today, but you can use whichever kind of oil you prefer. You can use regular oil, grapeseed oil, whatever you would like to use. And uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this recipe in a moment, but let's just get the, the um, spices on. So we're going to put two teaspoons of mustard seeds. And a Can you show us how the mustard seeds look? Because yes. often in the shop, we only get mustard powder. So this is um, our mustard seeds, you can see this is what we call a spice dubber, and it's an essential part of a vegetarian kitchen. It's a very useful thing to have. And then I've got cumin seeds. I've put one teaspoon 
of cumin seeds in that hot oil and, um, and a little bit of that one teaspoon of uh, turmeric powder. So we get a nice um, yellow look. So what we want is um, to uh, make this nice and warm and until the mustard seeds start to pop. So while we're waiting for that to warm up, I would like to tell you a little bit about um, this recipe. Many years ago, once a month, I used to go to a little town um, called Brits. And in Brits lived a number of powerful yogis. And uh, it was always a great delight to go and spend the night with them. And we would have class together and I would leave in the morning. And one of the um, wonderful experiences was that um, I learned some of the magical Gujarati recipes from these powerful yogis. And so the recipe that we are doing today is uh, from that time. And of course, I've made it vegan. But so the first thing that you need for this recipe is the good African, what we call green mealy. Not the sweet corn, we need the green mealy for this. And it's still mealy season. So if you find them, you can experiment with this recipe. So I'm going to ask Gail to zoom in here. What I've done is I have cut the, off the cob two green mealies. I've cut the corn off the cob and I've blended it with some green chilies and water so that it resembles a nice soft porridge. Mm. If you don't put the water in, you'll find it very difficult to actually blend the, the mealy. So you need the water and you can put your green chilies into the um, uh, mixture when you, uh, when you blend it. So now, I don't know if you can hear, but um, our mustard seeds are starting to pop. And that's exactly what we want. We want them nice and hot. And we're going to add to this, um, this mixture. And this uh, recipe is traditionally a Gujarati breakfast. But I must tell you that um, it's nice to eat at any time of day. And another ingredient that I almost forgot is curry leaves. And so I'm going to pop these curry leaves in and that lovely crackle. And I'll just give it a moment uh, while it gets nice and hot. And then I'm going to add the blended um, mealies to this dish. So let's do that now. There we go. I'm, I'm sorry you can't smell the aroma. There's a lovely aroma coming from these spices. And uh, we just gently incorporate the, the oil and the spices. Um, into the uh, mixture and um, I've got the, the um, stove on a medium heat um, because we need it uh, to cook uh, nicely through. We don't want it too low and we don't want it too high. I'm using a, a non-stick frying pan which is absolutely ideal because Mealies have a lot of starch in them, and um, this tends to make them stick. Uh, and so a non-stick pan is really good for this. And then finally, all I'm going to add now is some salt. So to this quantity, I would add uh, one and a half teaspoons. I'm using Himalayan salt, but you can use whichever salt you prefer. And, um, and then just mix that in nicely. There we go. 
And already, as it's heating up, I can tell that the water is starting to evaporate from the heat. Now, um, this is going to cook for about 20 minutes um, on here. And during the cooking process, it will definitely dry. So as you stir it from time to time, just keep adding a bit of water so that you keep this nice soft porridge um, uh, consistency. And then you let it cook for about uh, 20 minutes, stirring occasionally. And um, I've put two green chilies in this mixture um, because I think my chilies are very mild. I hope they're very mild. Otherwise, this is going to be very strong. But if you've got a nice strong chili, in this quantity of uh, two, two green mealies, you probably only need one chin. So now I'm going to put the lid on and, um, and pass you back uh, to the team. And you'll come back to me after Sister Indrani and I'll show you the second part uh, of our recipe once this has been cooking. So enjoy the rest of the demonstration and I'll see you a bit later. Om Shanti. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Belinda. Don't worry, we're going to be coming back quite soon there. But how wonderful. So now from the Eastern Cape, Kwabecha. <laughs> I'm really trying my best to get this pronunciation right. Um, I warmly now welcome you to Mpumalanga. Can you see our sister Indrani is waiting for us there? <laughs> there we go. So here we are in Nelspreid. Welcome, sister Indrani. We are all with you. Thank you so much, sister Dipti, as always. So graceful and uh, so kind to always chair this uh, lovely program. Uh, I like the way you mentioned that uh, Yes, we are all wanting healthy food these days, but the energy behind it is so important. So I uh, chose this recipe because I discovered that I am uh, intolerant to gluten. So I decided to um, uh, experiment with this healthy flour, absolutely healthy, high fiber, uh, it's got high protein, iron, and also uh, I've discovered it's got prebiotics that support our good bacteria in our digestive system. So here we sh shall start now. And um, I have the millet flour, which I'm going to use. You have a very nice apron on, Sister Indrani. I can see you dress for today's occasion. Yes, I like it. It's so, it's so lovely. It's got some color also. <laughs> so uh, I have some, um, they call it bajra flour. It's also known as millet flour. So I have... It's one to one. I have um, one cup of water in this pot and I have one cup of flour. So now we will commence with the roti. And so I'm going to boil the water first before I put in the flour. Um, then it's very easy to actually roll the flour. Because of the gluten, I, uh, no gluten, I suppose it's difficult and that's why it breaks. Yes. Um, I'm coming to that. You can use uh, urad, I don't know what they call it in English, 
The urat flower you can add as well, but the urat flower I found it is a bit strong and it has a strong um, fragrance. So what I um, prefer to use is a gluten-free brown flower. That actually also works very well. So you can also add salt. I don't like adding salt, but just quarter teaspoon of salt to your water so that it gives it some taste. And um, so this will boil in a few minutes and then I will add the flour to it. And also you've got to add a tablespoon of olive oil or any other oil that you have so that the dough becomes nice and soft and it's easy to work with. So it's amazing. The water is boiling. It's a gas, it's a little gas stove that I love so much. We have a stove, but uh, it's in the corner and it's very dark there. You may not see me. So therefore, I actually prefer using this. So this flour has been also sifted to remove all lumps. So when it's cooking, it's uh, nice and smooth. So I will bring the temperature down a bit so that it cooks a bit slowly and it's one to one. It's cooking very fast. And I'm going to, yeah. You don't have to cook it for too long. Leave it to cook on very, very low heat. That's it. I can just cover it. Yeah. And so in the meantime, I'm going to get the stir fry organized uh, for the uh, millet grains. So for the stir fry, I have a mixed vegetable. Uh, not the uh, frozen mixed vegetable. I actually have uh, fresh broccoli, uh, fresh green beans, and uh, and carrots, and yeah, just three um, vegetables that are nice and what? fresh. Show us. <laughs> there we go. Thank yeah. you. So yes, so it's nice and colorful, and it looks fresh and good. So what I'm going to do is now that this dough is cooked, I'll leave it aside to cool off. It has to cool before I dough it and I will have to put it in a, a dish. Sorry. I'll just put it into here. Can you see how versatile one can be? Hey, even though Sister Indrani is alone, I can sense she's alone at the center and she is the camera person and she's the chef and she's hosting us all together. So a variety of experiences all in one, but it's beautifully silent. It's a lovely energy there, Sister Indrani. Thank you, it is. So um, I put in some uh, oil, uh, some oil in here, about one tablespoon is oil is enough. And so I have the mustard seeds that uh, Sister Belinda showed you earlier, and I have some celery seeds, very fine seeds, and it gives uh, some flavor to the stir fry. You can add chili or ginger paste, well, I'm just not using that because I want to taste the vegetables. So we'll switch this on. So 
So we don't have to wait that long for, for the seeds to pop. And so I'm going to put in the vegetables and allow for them to just simmer for a short while, not to overcook them, just to have them crunchy as well. And so while that's happening, I'd like to um, show you the, the millet grains. These are the millet grains. And so I soak them for two hours and they pop up nicely and they have little eyes. They have little eyes. And so when you see those eyes, you drain out the water. You put in two cups of water and what, uh, no, no. I use half a cup of millet and sorry, I just need to put this on low. When we cook, remember to start off high and then bring the heat low. So then the food really cooks well. So I have this millet, it's half a cup and one cup of water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to boil this and about 10 minutes and then I'll strain it out and then I will add it to the stir fry. So the stir fry seems like it's almost done. Okay, so the stir fry is done. So we shall put this to boil a bit. And I am going to knead the roti. So that's uh, quite a, not challenging, but the dough has to be done properly so that, um, yeah, so that it's nice and firm. I will just get it now. It's amazing during this time when we have this opportunity to cook. It's, as we said earlier, it's not just about the cooking itself, but it's about the wonderful atmospheres that we create. And as this atmosphere is created, it supports the energy of food so much. So what are you doing now, Sister Indrani? Oh, can you see the dough? It looks a bit green. It's yeah. Big. It's the millet flour, and so it's high in fiber, as I mentioned earlier. And um, if you're having a problem with constipation, this uh, millet roti is actually excellent. Very, very good for the system. So um, I'm going to knead it with gluten-free flour. I have urad flour, but as I mentioned earlier, it's a bit strong fragrance. And so I'll just add like two tablespoons so that it can bind the flour properly. And then I make the dough, a nice soft dough, because once you um, toast it, it can become a bit uh, stiff and hard. So I actually prefer to put less flour and have a nice soft dough and it also binds very well. And then I will show you how to roll it. And I've like cleaned the um, surface. It's like all surgically clean. Because <laughs> wooden, uh, on the wooden board, <laughs> it tends to stick. <laughs> So on the surface, with the tile, it's nice and cold, and so it helps. So can you see how the dough is actually uh, created? Yeah, it's nice and soft. Yeah? Yes. It's a nice soft dough. And doesn't take 
a long time to make. You just, as I said, just add one cup of flour, one cup of uh, water, and one tablespoon of olive oil, and cook it for a short while. You will see it's all cooking nicely. And so bring it to a low heat, let it simmer for a short while, and then you empty it out, let it cool properly, otherwise it'll be too sticky. And so now the dough is done. And we make them into small balls and we shall roll them out. Okay. And you can get nice six, six rotis out of this dough. So you roll it out nicely like so. Roll it out nicely so that you don't see any cracks in the dough. So when the cracks disappear, then the roti comes out nice and smooth and round and so you roll it out a bit thin so that it's um it tastes good and also um if you just have even two it's very very filling so oops so it looks like the millet is done I will strain it out and so we shall move to this end. So the millet and the stir fry is done. It's only the roti, which I won't take too much time. I will um, actually make a few, just maybe three so that you see what's happening. Yeah. Okay. So. So you put on the tower here, like so. So as I mentioned earlier, I use, as for the kitchen, when you come to the kitchen, <laughs> it smells like a hospital because I always spray to antibacterial spray and Keep it all nice and clean so that we don't get any infection and uh, everything is fresh and neat and clean. And then also the vibrations are very good as well. So what I do is I do this because then the, the whole roti becomes um, even all around. So... This dough is quite a different dough as the usual dough, like we make rotis. And so, you must have a little extra strength for this because you need a lot of energy to. Any dough that is gluten free, the ah. more you need it, the yeah. more pliable it becomes. That's it's actually it. necessary for gluten-free dough to be uh, kneaded like this well so yeah. that it becomes pliable. That's true. So uh, now I'm going to roll it. And uh, it's ideal if this uh, dough is left for 
maybe an hour or so, then you find that it's um, very, very good to actually uh, roll out. Yeah. You can see our sisters used to making chapatis, rotis. <laughs> Wonderful. And you're able to roll them quite thin, which is incredible. Because with this yeah. dough, it's it's uh, quite delicate. Yes, yes, it is. So what I usually do is I make a whole lot and then I switch on the uh, the gas cooker and then I put it on so it makes it easy for me. And so I'm just doing the sides because it's nice to have roti when uh, the sides are not thick. You know, then it's, uh, it's nice to have and uh, it also looks good. So presentation of the food has to be also good. So that's done. I know Sister Dipti loves to roll rotis because she says it's reflexology, and that's so true. <laughs> yes, it's the most natural reflexology for for all of us. If you want to make sure that your hands have good treatment of reflexology make your parties every day and you'll yeah. have good food and your body will have the right pressure points reflexed there we go so we saw how we went to port elizabeth and we learned the mealy's chevro and now we are in Mpumalanga in nelspreit and there our sister Indrani is making chapatis, rotis for us. What quality are you picking up from her as she's making this and she's given us a valuable time? Put it in the chat. What are you learning from her besides just a gluten-free roti? What is coming up for you? What qualities are important in consciousness whilst cooking? Tell us. Anybody? We have wonderful participants. Lightness, Carol. Carol saying she's enjoying lightness. Gail is saying she's enjoying contentment. Yes. That's wonderful. You know, these are such powerful qualities in our journey of life. Yeah. So, so now you're I'm just, just saying, up. yeah, okay, go for it. I'm just heating up the tawa and it'll get done in no time. And once you start toasting them, they get toasted very fast. So like in, say, less than uh, 10 minutes, you can have a meal. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So Sister Aruna is enjoying the cleanliness and the... Oh, I just missed it. <laughs> okay. And they're enjoying your smiling face, Sister Kumari. Sister Kumari is saying, Indrani, you have a nice smiling face. <laughs> it's beautiful. Jaren is saying, accuracy. Yeah. Yeah. It's so important, our vibration, whilst we do whatever. You know, sometimes people are cooking and they look so stressed and you wonder, what energy am I going to put in my body? So that day you say, no, no, I'm not hungry. Thank you so much. <laughs> so it's very lovely when food is cooked with wonderful consciousness like that. Yes, oh, I love cooking. I spend lots of time in the kitchen, peeling, cutting. Uh, I like uh, making things that are fresh. I love to, to clean the green beans. I love to cut them. Uh, any vegetable. I love cleaning and then also cooking them and appreciating them. So here's our, our roti. 
Wow, and it puffed up so nicely. Yes. Yeah. They say those whose rotis puffed up are very much loved by the family. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So wonderful. So we've got the millet rotis and then what else is there on that menu that we just prepared now, Sustained okay, Rani? Yeah, it's, the, it's the millet grain. Yes, and, uh, and the, the stir fry. fry. Yes, it's all done. So what I have to do is, I just need to put it into the. Uh, I just need to put it into the stir fry, and uh, I was supposed to add the salt, which I omitted. But salt free is also very healthy, but I will actually do that now. Just to, you know, if this food don't have salt, then it's like not, there's no taste. Brother Reggie is saying you maybe have a good opportunity because you're very welcome to come into his kitchen to cut veggies. <laughs> you know, fresh vegetables have such a energy. I think it's not about just the vegetable itself yeah. but i think today in the world we're not Second earth enough. Well. wow lovely and it's all very good like so so i make and that. these rotis can stay for a while they don't get too dry isn't it uh, yes you have to then cover them and put them into a container and uh Oh, wait, I'll put it like so. This is how... A little bit closer. We can't see the pot, my dear. Like that's so. better. Yeah, yeah, that's better. That's it, that's it. The millet and the... Um, mixed veggies. Yeah. yeah. So that, we'll do some decorative thing with that just now. And so I was going to tell you, like you were asking about the rotis, yeah. So what I do is I actually uh, put them, I put the rotis into a container that is, uh, that will keep them nice and soft. So this container is a food container, but I also use it for roti, which keeps the rotis nice and soft. So what I do is I put it in here and I close it. So it stays and it's nice and soft. So, um, yeah, so this roti you can have with anything. So now let us go for the presentation now. Presentation. So in the background, you can see the beautiful center you can see the chairs that face the meditation, and it looks like a lovely sunny day today in Nelspreet with the silence and purity of the atmosphere. The silence and the purity of the atmosphere is beautiful, sustained so, Rani. So this Wonderful. Is how, this is how it looks like. And so what I'm going to do is I will just put some... Uh, Lift it, lift it, lift it. Some seeds. Yeah. And I'm going to add some uh, some walnuts to it, like so. And so this is how it actually looks. Yummy. Sister yes. Carol says yummy. Oh, so tasty. Yeah. So this is the presentation with how do you see? There we go. Yeah. So this is the presentation. And then um, the roti, you can have it like with the... I made some cauliflower. And I put some lettuce. And uh, yeah, and some tomato. And so this is how... This is how it's. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. 
There we go. And there are dishes all done. So your millet roti, the millet, the mixed veg, and the nuts and everything. Thank okay. you so much, Jane Rani. And <laughs> thank you. Let us take a few seconds of beautiful silence in a beautiful center that is glowing with such love and light and good energy. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Have a lovely. Thank you. Bye-bye. We're just going to go and have a quick visit back into our center in Kwabeja in, in the Eastern Cape, where Sister Belinda has done the final product to show us how it's going to be presented. Wow, there we go. We are back, Sister Belinda. Welcome back and thank you, Sister Indrani. That was just so wonderful. Um, I'm always interested in gluten-free um, things, so that was very nice. So um, since uh, you were last here, um, this has been cooking very nicely. And um, after about uh, 20 minutes, what I did was I added the main ingredient, which is... Um, a one can of coconut milk. Now, if you're not vegan and you can tolerate um, dairy, then you can use the equivalent. This um, is 400 mils. You can use the equivalent of normal milk. And I'll just show you the consistency. It's still cooking very nicely. And um, it's a lovely soft, porridge you can see and this is actually ready to be enjoyed Wonderful. Um, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to garnish it with the traditional garnish for this dish which is um, desiccated coconut so I'm going to sprinkle desiccated coconut on top and nothing nicer than fresh coriander leaves just to put that finishing touch and there we have a wonderful mini chevro which can be enjoyed either as your breakfast or as we are going to do this afternoon we're going to have it with tea in wonderful. true Gujarati style <laughs> so thanks to everyone thank you so much so we've been to this wonderful kitchen. This is in our center and it's a wonderful energy. Let's um, just share in a few seconds the energies you felt whilst being here in the Eastern Cape. You can see I'm avoiding the word Port Elizabeth because I can't pronounce the word. So what, what has come up for you? So much love, beautiful. Any other thoughts? What nice energies you felt, lightness, serene, easiness, beautiful. Thank you, Sister Belinda. It's been wonderful and powerful. Manu saying powerful. That's lovely. It's so beautiful when we can make simple but beautiful dishes filled with the right energy. Thank you. Now we arrive in Gauteng. Sister, Sister Shirley and Brother Mirko is awaiting us in Lanasia. Sister Shirley, we are at the door. Oh, Sister Jyoti is letting us in. We are here, Sister Jyoti. Oh, and there's Sister Shirley, all waiting, full of smiles. We can't hello, hear you, Sister Shirley. Welcome to Lanasia. And my Thank sister, you. Sister, Thank you for being with us and making uh, all our cookery demos so far so special, so lovely, adding your energy of love, that energy of a big, big heart, and um, loving, special energy. So thank you, everyone, and my dear sisters, um, Indrani, Sister Belinda, 
thank you for your time and such a beautiful uh, and lovely dishes made with a lot of love as well. So we're going to start off. So can we start, Sister Tipti? Yes, please do. I can't wait because so many wonderful things on the table. I really want to know what's going to be for menu today. Lovely, lovely. So we're going to start off with a very easy, soft and easy buns. I have the same dough that I will uh, show you how I <clears throat> make um, savory buns filled with some savories um, and, um, and plain buns as well. So let's start. I have to uh, mix the dough because uh, the dough needs to be um, standing uh, for an hour to be risen as well. Because it's got yeast inside, Sister Shirley. Got yeast in it, yes. To start off with, uh, there is, um, I made a small lot. So half a cup of warm milk, half a cup of warm water, um, a quarter cup oil, half a teaspoon uh, sorry, a half a tablespoon of brown sugar, half a teaspoon salt, and um, I used uh, a teaspoon, uh, not level teaspoon, but a little, I won't say even heaped teaspoon, but um, enough, a teaspoon of yeast. Am I pronouncing right, yeast? Yes, 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 yes. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> firstly, with the um, uh, firstly with the warm milk, very uh, little warm milk and the water. I put in a dish, uh, in a small dish, uh, with the sugar, the sugar that is half a tablespoon sugar, and. Um, half a teaspoon salt, and I mix it nicely, and adding the yeast, adding the oil, and let it stand for five minutes. In the meantime, I, ha I have uh, two and a half cups of flour. So two cups of white flour and a half a cup of brown flour here. And see how lovely the dough is already. It's been standing an hour. An interesting note to know when you're working with yeast baking is that whenever you work with any yeast, when you add sugar to the part of the yeast, the yeast is always activated well. You always try and keep the sugar and the salt separate from the yeast. So if you're putting yeast and sugar, then you put the salt in the flour and you will see that your, your bread dough always comes out lighter because yeast loves sugar. And so your yeast gets activated beautifully with sugar, but it gets inhibited with salt. Okay, I'm taking a piece of this or half the dough. Nice soft dough. I'm sure we can see many virtues emerging whilst our sister is doing this. I'm and sure you're taking note of that. Making three pieces of this, three equal pieces of half the dough that. So just making them nice and brown. As our sister in Rani was doing rotis. So lovely.
This one's got a little bit extra. Are you enjoying the afternoon, everyone? So firstly, I want uh, I want to make um, the savory buns. I will just someone can help me this up here. The savory buns to start off with. And you can do a filling, your desired filling you can do, but here I have um, soya mince, which was um, uh, boiled quite well, rinsed out and, um, you know, you squeeze all the excess water. And then I put a, a bit of oil in the pan and let the soya mince um, dry up a bit with a little bit of dania powder, coriander powder, um, jeera powder, cumin powder, and salt. I put a cinnamon stick in it. You put chili in it, you put ginger, and let it cook a bit. And then I chop up carrots. I've got finely chopped carrots um, and red peppers and yellow peppers here. Our sister, some of you know Sister Grace, she doesn't eat greens. She can't, not allowed greens anymore. So I made it accordingly. And so this is the filling. I've also, also tried the, the filling of uh, the, green, the mug. Soak the mug overnight and braise it with some oil, um, cumin powder, uh, all the spices that I've shared. And, um, and put vegetables. You can uh, chop up some carrots, green beans, and peppers. And um, but I also added, uh, sorry, some tomato chutney in the soap. It's not too dry, so it's also a bit moist as well. So this is the savory bun. So what I do, I bring them together. And this dough is so nice that you can just press them lightly and it sticks quite well together. It seals very well like this. Then I turn it and I just press it down like this. So this is the most easiest dough as well as the filling is quite easy as well. So let's make another one. So about this size normally for the savory. Can you see the care and the attention <laughs> and the preciseness of movement of those hands and mental energy there? Beautiful. And it's a nice, nice dish for sending uh, for kids for lunch, for family members for lunch, etc. So this is the same thing. 
bank. So let's do one roll as well, a plain roll, because I'm going to show you in a short while um, the eggplant and red pepper pattern. So nice burger bun. And uh, here. So here I'm going, uh, I have here a tablespoon of yogurt, um, a tablespoon of oil, olive oil, and I have a tablespoon of melted butter. And so brushing that well. So now, just like this, it looks a bit uh, not too fancy. So I'm going to sprinkle some sesame seeds that I have here and oregano as well mixed up. So just to sprinkle over, so to give it a nice finish as well. So that's dish that is done. Any questions on this dish? This is the leftover dough that I will do shortly as well. I want to share with you about this dough. Yesterday I um, made this dough, so I wanted to start the preparation for uh, today and, uh, and make some things. And then the lights went off. And so I had all this. I tried this, um, this buns on, uh, on the gas stove. Didn't come out too well. It was a bit dry. But then I thought, what am I going to do? So I took the same dough, the one with the yeast, and, and I rolled it out. And I cut it the um, size of a roti. And I cut it into fours. And I fried it, making puris. It was the most nicest puri that I've ever eaten. And there was no oil as well. So the same recipe, so to make puris is excellent <laughs> as well. So that was just an experiment because there was no lights uh, and no um, oven for baking. Sister Shirley, our oh, divine yes. soul is asking, are you an Uber Eats delivery? Sorry. <laughs> One divine soul is asking, are you on the Uber Eats delivery? I think they want to. Uh, not yet. We're working not on yet. <laughs> so that is done. And this buns normally stands for about 15 minutes and then we bake it another further 15 minutes as well, and you bake it. It's lovely to have with a, a chili sauce, with salads, etc. And I'm going to show you something else I'm looking for. Yes. Uh, that on the side, is that your finished of the same one? We can see one? something nice yes, next yes, to the... Sorry. Uh, we were looking at that when you're going to offer that to us. Yeah. This is a finished dish. You see the, yes, the savory buns. You can have with sauce. You can have with danya chutney, whatever. And when you have, um, you know, uh, what you call right to. Yeah. It's made yes. with yogurt and cucumber 
and wonderful. So this is the finished dish and then the rolls there. I've got wonderful. Don't you feel you are right there in the Laneysha Center? Yes, you're most welcome to come in for tea and join in if you're close by. So this is the this is the the buns, wow. the normal ones. Thank you, and the patty. So this My sister is saying the there's such time. accuracy, honesty, and joy at this moment. That's beautiful. Accuracy, honesty, and joy. Such lovely qualities. So this is a lovely, lovely pate that goes with this plain rolls. And I've done it uh, uh, because just to save time, etc. So here... There's three brangels, medium-sized brangels, or you call it known as known as eggplant. So you cut it, cut them into halves, and uh, place it in the uh, baking sheet. Um, sorry, firstly, uh, with brangels, we all know that we when we cut them, we soak them a little while in salt water, a little while, so that it takes out the bitterness, etc. And then place it on a baking sheet. And then you split it a bit. You split the brangels, and uh, then you just um, uh, pour in some olive oil and salt. Uh, sprinkle salt over and put it in a preheated oven to bake for about half an hour, 45 minutes. And uh, when it's uh, soft, then take it out of the oven and let it cool a bit for about 20 minutes. And um, the red peppers uh, you chop up for that uh, three uh, medium sized brangels. Uh, a cup of red peppers, chopped up red peppers. That needs to be um, uh, roasted. Uh, I roasted it on the pan with no oil, nothing. You just roast it on the pan, maybe for about 20 minutes or so um, till the, the red peppers are soft. And take them out and um, when the Brangels are a bit cool. Scoop them out of the, the flesh out of the uh, sh shell, shell skin. Sorry, and um, and with the with the roasted red peppers, you put them in a blender. You add in two tablespoons of olive oil a tablespoon of oregano, two tablespoons of salt, and black pepper. You can even use um, cayenne pepper if you like, if you really enjoy a strong food. So you use cayenne pepper instead of um, the black pepper. And you blend them all together. But sometimes you just uh, taste a bit and see. It may require a little bit more of lemon juice. So you can add that lemon juice to uh, that. I think that's all in this ingredient. I hope I didn't miss out anything. Salt, olive oil, oregano, lemon juice. Black pepper. Yes. Any questions on this? This is such a tasty pate uh, to spread on a, a roll, a plain roll. I've tasted uh, once with um, this pate on a plain roll. Uh, there's um, burgers, Trident burgers, uh, the brand Trident burgers, uh, chili burger uh, with the 
this pate, and it's a quite nice with chopped up lettuce as well. So this is the pate. So everyone can have a look. This is with three brangels and a cup of red pepper. And uh, this, uh, this dish can be kept in the fridge for about three days. You can use it, uh, especially weekends when you don't like to do cooking and things and uh, just get some buns, etc. And you got patties and the family can make some chips or burgers or whatever and have it with their rolls. Any questions on this? Sounds delicious. Sounds delicious, yes. Too hungry now. Hello, any questions? I'm going to do the, now do a very simple and easy crunchy recipe. I've got such good assistance here, you won't believe it as well. And Brother Merkel is also waiting quite patiently. We're now going to do the crunchy recipe. What is the one speciality you see as Sister Shirley is working people. I'm sure it's so obvious and so loud <laughs> as we're seeing her work. So what are you picking up and what makes food peaceful, calm and a nice energy? Make sure there's no speck of dust there on the table, Sister <laughs> Shirley. I can see that she's making sure. Yeah, yeah. Sister Gita saying there's lovely patience in your work. Yeah. Thank you. So um, for this normal baking tray, um, I've uh, greased it with some butter. So for this tray, um, the quantity I use is one and a half quantity, but the one that you will get onto on the recording, what's it? On the, sorry, the, the recipe um, that uh, will be sent on uh, email and uh, on email, the quantities are for one. And that tray that you see, just a moment. So the recipes that you will receive is for a tray this size. But I'm doing the uh, baking sheet, the normal baking sheet from the oven, and I'm using this baking sheet. So I made it, the quantity is um, one and a half. So I'm going to go through the dry ingredients now. So here I have three cups of nutty wheat, three cups nutty wheat. One and a half cups of oats. So, so far, three cups nutty wheat, one and a half cups of oats, one and a half cups of coconut. This is the dry ingredients. So I normally add to this, I like to add a half a cup of uh, sunflower seeds and a quarter cup of sesame seed to this dry ingredient.
So now, here I have here I have 75 grams of melted butter. And I just used a cup of brown sugar because I don't uh, normally make things too sweet. A cup of brown sugar. And um, the ingredients here, 12,5 uh, mils syrup, and then I added six. 6.2. What's that? All together, you add it up. So, uh, for this um, crunchy, if you're quite precise, especially with the syrup and um, the bicarb is three moles bicarb to the warm, um, warm butter, melted butter. And then uh, I just put a little, just less than a full teaspoon. Just less than a full teaspoon I use here. And if you're quite precise with the bicarb and you're quite precise with the syrup, um, you will find, you know, normally as we're getting older, our teeth are no longer strong, you know? <laughs> so we are a bit afraid that uh, Sometimes crunchies, you know, when we put too much syrup or something and they get quite hard and uh, we can be quite afraid to bite on them. We might uh, break our teeth or our bones. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but this uh, crunchy, I would say, is always so excellent. It's crunchy. But it's not hard at all. The perfect crunchy I always find and um, not overbaked. And uh, I'll show you the end product and the color of the crunchy. And uh, then, and just mix the liquid together with the dry ingredient, cut it and put it into the oven. And you, need, you know, within 20 minutes, you have a nice tray of crunchies for the week. Healthy, not too much sugar, because as I just put um, a cup for three cups of, I mean, for all those dry ingredients. Easy and with a lot of love, quick, easy, crunchy. Sometimes if you want to add a little bit of ginger powder, you can, according to your taste, sometimes maybe you would like a bit of cinnamon powder to give it a different flavor. And it mixes easily, quite easily as well. So all done.
Sister Shirley, there's a question. Yes. What is the consistency of the mixed crunchy before you bake it? Consistency. What should I say? Uh, if you hold it, you can hold it, right? In yes, your hand, yes. if you hold it. Yes. Yeah. It, can you bind it in your you hand? You can bind it, yes. Yeah. If you bind it nicely, it means the consistency is fine. Yes. You can even shape it and make single ones if you want. But this goes quite nice and easy. Um, sometimes I, um, when I have extra walnuts, walnuts, yes, I chop them in. Oh, it tastes wonderful. And walnuts are good for the brains. Oh, thank you. Good for the brains and good for the heart. Okay. So I will just shake it a little bit. Nice and even. And have the pre uh, the oven pre preheated oven. And this goes in the oven about 15, 20 minutes. And when it's taken out, cut it whilst it's so warm. Nice. Yeah. There we go. So neat. Thank you, sister. And this is and this is the end product of the pan cheese. And this color is quite a nice color. So it doesn't get too dry, etc. For about 15, 20 minutes, it bakes in a preheated oven. Thank you, Sister Shirley. You can see all the efforts that have actually gone in before that, so that you can see the final product and everything on time. Our Sister Velvet is saying, Yum, yum. You see, we are on the other yum. side yes. of the screen. Yeah. Come visit when you <laughs> Thank you all. Thank, Thank you so much. Time. So the few virtues you picked up, I saw some beautiful ones that have come up. So as we look at Sister Shirley with a lot of love for her love and generosity and kindness of heart, what are the main lessons you've learned from her? But also, uh, after you do that, but also a few minutes remembering the divine for giving us the strength to prepare all this. But when we prepare that we stay in that centeredness, that deep awareness of love, that um, the deep awareness of our divine. We know our divine creator doesn't have a physical body, but the fragrance drawing his love and remembrance into what we do that love and that energy and that fragrance whilst we are cooking gets into the food and whoever eats the food their hearts also get very happy and also free from all tension etc sister so melvin says you you exude well. patience care and love. <laughs> Where's our brother Mirko? We are waiting now for our brother Mirko. I think uh, also I want to uh, remind everyone the recipe uh, for the buns that you will be getting uh, on email, etc. Uh, somehow um, 
I didn't use that recipe, but um, the recipe that I use today will be downloaded on the, and sent to you as well. Thank you once again. For Sister Roshni says me. that I feel I'm in a heavenly kitchen. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, Brother Mirko. A warm, warm welcome to you. We've been through a wonderful journey and we've made me share all the wonderful things. And so now we're so excited to go into this journey of health. Every time I see Brother Mirko, um, it's, he's always very, very inspiring. What he makes is tasty, as he uses the word tasty, but yet at the same time, such consideration and respect for the body and for the things that the body has to absorb. So welcome brother Mirko and let us go on this journey with you. Thank you. Uh, this time of the afternoon, it's a little bit slight, uh, like this makes a bit lazy. So uh, I had a request from the um, assistants here that they want the juice. So I know everybody knows how to make a juice. The one special juice that is easy to make and very quick is uh, very simple ingredients, which is um, carrots, celery, and green apples. So we'll do that, we will do that in one minute. Is the happiness coming out of the juice on the vibration of your face, Brother Mirko? Which one is much more powerful, that juice or the vibration on your face? Your voice is not so clear, Brother Mirko. Just check why. We can't hear you too clearly. Oh, I see. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the machine was making noise. I see this is a very easy to make it and very, uh, requires very little time, but it's very healthy and refreshing. So this is the lately, lately juice that we use. So it's a carrots, celery, and green apple. And those of you that suffer or struggle with a sluggish liver and gallbladder, your apple and celery combination is very good for your bile ducts. And it's actually very good for the flow of bile. So anytime these days, many people struggle a lot more with their liver and gallbladder due to our eating and lifestyle habits. And so when we include celery and apple particularly into our juicing, they're very good to sustain a healthy gallbladder. So it seems like brother is now going to make something very interesting for us. Okay, so now we're going to make it kombucha. Kombucha, what is kombucha, brother? Beg your pardon. What is the kombucha? It oh, sounds like a nice oh, name. Just give me a chance. So I'm <laughs> testing, am I, am I trembling in my skin? But it looks like I'm, I'm, I'm not relaxed. So, okay. so kombucha is um, made 
it's a beverage, uh, it's a drink, healthy drink. And it's made with ordinary sleep tea and SCOBY. This is a SCOBY. SCOBY is, uh, that's what the name is. Uh, now, how to make it, maybe <laughs> how to make it. You can make it your own or you can buy a SCOBY. Uh, uh, almost every health shop is selling this movie. It's, um, um, and so this Kobe eats most of the sugar that is in the tea. And Kobe also transforms this, uh, uh, this tea into um, refreshing, uh, slightly fizzy and lightly uh, sour, uh, refreshing beverage that is very low in calories and sugar. And what is it good for? Mainly it's got a culture um, for digestion. And there are many, some other goodies benefit from the inside, but also overall health. And so kombucha is very much advertised and very well known, it's not new. But I'm a doctor to make it at home, and so I'll share with you today how we make it. It's, well, I would say for me, very simple, but maybe it's not so simple. So you make it, this is already tea, everybody knows to make it. This is a tea made of um, five liters of water. I use a loose tea, but you can use tea bags as well. And I use, this time I use a rooibos tea. So it's a rooibos tea, I use it um, eight, actually nine tablespoon loose rooibos tea. And if you use a bag, it should be 12. Yeah, I usually use 12 tea bags. And when the tea is boiled, you boil it for a few minutes and then you add then you add a cup. This is an ordinary cup, one and a half cup of sugar into it. And then you have your tea. As I mentioned earlier, scoby you buy, and now you have to mix the two together. So how you do that? Actually, it takes three, these three bottles will be filled with this. So how do you do that? May I add them? So we pour it and just strain it. So we pour tea into the glass jar. Which we do now. You will see the color is a little bit dark, but actually it becomes a little bit fake. It fades after use. So as our brother Reggie says that kombucha is a probiotic and all our bodies need probiotics. They, they're good for the body, for our digestive system. Okay, so this would be enough tea. So what we do, so we add it then, we add it. Yeah, tea has to be cool, cool, cool at the room temperature. So now we will give a one scoby here, and one, one scoby and one baby scoby. Baby scoby is this one, very cute one, you see? It's the one from the previous one, just two weeks ago, it came. So this is like the mother and this is a child. So usually you need a one scoby, but I need them put them together. And so now I need a cloth. Is scoby uh, like a mushroom? Yeah, it's, um, it's a mushroom with the, um, I something to say. So somebody's asking, can we use jaggery or raw honey instead of sugar? 
Yes, not right here, not right now. Okay. Usually I know in the sugar, yes, I'll tell you when, when you can use uh, honey. And that is it. Now we leave it this for after eight days, you should taste it to see is it sweet or is it going sour. If it is even eight days, it depends on the weather. Better like this, I would say 10 days. After 10 days, so, okay, so they will go next procedure. So this is the first, it's called first fermentation. So after 10 days, your scoby is ready to be bottled. But if you want to now to add extra, that's called second fermentation. For second fermentation, oh yes, I forgot one thing. Okay, you know when you make yogurt, you add that old culture. Similar here, when you make uh, this one, you also, this is a previous thing. So you add some of it into the fresh one. So that would be what I see now. So suppose, now this is already after 10 days, is ready, it will become more or less as this one here. Um, so now for second fermentation, actually it's ready to be bottled if you don't want flavor or anything else. But if you want to make it like a, like a carbonated drink, then we do the second fermentation. What I do, I empty, so suppose it is now ready. I empty this together with other bottles into same for similar container. And I add the fruit juice. I add fruit juice. Some do add fresh fruit. You can then add honey. You can add actually whatever you like to. Uh, so what I add, I add for this bottle, I would add maybe this much juice. And to make it flavor it, I use uh, essential oils. I don't use honey because it, it's slightly, slightly sweet. Very little sugar in it. But honey would make it sweet. But you can use the honey as well. So what I do, I flavor it with the essential oil. For this, I would put maybe four drops of this oil. Uh, and depends what flavor I want. For example, I like a geranium. I will put another four drops geranium and uh, uh, another four drops of lemon. And then put it in the bottle. So it's ready. Then you leave it for two or three days outside on this room temperature. Then it's carbonated and fermented and fermented and it's ready to be used. Now to prevent it for further carbonation and fermentation, you have to put it in the fridge and use it within the month, usually within the month, four weeks. Um, what else is left? Yeah, the, the no, end product. So, and it, this is it, it's, it's, I don't know, does it sound simple? Uh, it's anything that I missed. Um, Oh, yes. this is Sometimes people say that initially, whilst you're putting it, why do you have to use so much sugar? But the sugar is not what we eat, isn't it? It's the scoby that eats the so sugar. How, how would you make it? This is about, I don't know, how many, maybe 50, how many could be? Uh, say 30 cups of tea. So 30 cups of tea, if you add that, that would be 60 uh, teaspoons, no, maybe 50 cups of tea. So you would need a hundred, uh, if you use a tea or two uh, teaspoons. So which amounts, one cup actually is enough, but I, I like a little bit sweeter and I like to make it this one because this one gets very fat. She loves the sugar. And she gets actually on sugar. Uh, she loves on sugar. And so she eats most of the sugar. And uh, yeah, so 
But once it's finished, you can simply pour it in a bottle, but I would uh, suggest to leave it outside at least for a day or two and then store it. But if you like your flavors, then you add a fruit juice or anything you like to add to fruits or any other flavor. I usually do um, essential oils, it gives it nice flavor and it's then ready to drink. Okay, Joki, you can, uh, a photographer will have a taste of this one. Okay, this was a rose, rose geranium flavor. Thank you. That is oh, you have tasted before as well. Okay, so this is all about the Scooby. Any questions? Uh, and we have um, uh, it was a lot of writing in it, so I don't know in a recipe if it's something omitted, you can ask me. The, no, the, the color difference, it's uh, maybe I left a little bit more to boil. So, but it gets usually to this color of color and face. Thank you, brother. It looks wonderful. And I think it's such a nice balancing aspect to be able to have kombucha. I've tasted kombucha and it's been uh, always a very refreshing drink. And it's always very good for the digestive system. And I think if one learns to make it at home, firstly, it, you save a lot because it is quite expensive in the shop. And also you can add the vibration that you require. So that's a wonderful gift to us. Thank you, Brother Mirko, so that we can make our own kombucha at home. Thank you. And yeah. yes, as I say, anyone who is on that uh, uh, can contact the center or the number in the central office. I'm always willing to help if you would like it. Actually, you don't have to make this much, but the idea we bring from and we offer whoever comes this, so that's why I make it this much. So then it comes about six or ten, more than ten bottles like this. And we finish them within two weeks. So every two weeks, and it takes a preparation. Doing it, I would say all about one hour, and second, not even a half hour. So one and a half hour you invest, and then you have a drink. You don't have to buy cold drinks or um, any of those uh, fizzy drinks, and even the juices, unless it's fresh. Okay, that's Thank all. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Formula. I call them babies because this ones. They just come within the, within the week and a half or so. Look at how they look Somebody cute. had asked you how to make a scoby, but you buy the scobies, isn't it? Uh, yes, you can make it. I never did it, actually. I, I got that as a gift, and that's how I started to make it. You can buy scobies in a health shop, ready like this one, or you can make it your own with the dry ingredients, which I never did, so I don't have to do Yes, definitely, if you... Um, Google it, and you'll find plenty of it uh, that explains on a probably professional way. But this is how it is, it's the same end product. So, Sister Aruna says she's noticed a beautiful virtue of wisdom. Yeah, that's wonderful. You know, I think when we look at your face, Brother Mirko. We feel quite convinced that this healthy food is very good for us. So thank you by inspiring, by being a good example for this. Thank you very much. So thank Sister you. Shirley, I think Bye. before we're going to end, you would like to take us through a short meditation and then yeah. afterwards we can um, Bring closure. Anybody else would like to share anything? Also to mention, if anyone wants a scoby, they're always extras. Always extras. Yeah. Can you see so Brother only, Mirko's big heart? Yeah. All you need this, and then you make a smaller quantity to start for one bottle like this. You need one scoby. And I always got an extra because they reproduce themselves because they don't want sugar. Thank you. Thank you. Sister Shirley, where's our sister Shirley? 
There we go. Sister Shirley is now going to take us through a wonderful meditation together and just to bring this energies beautifully together yes. as we come to the end of our cookery demo. So let us just sit. Brother Mirko, thanks. Yes. Oh, right. So let us just sit, relax, and let just let us settle. Having been through the afternoon with all the dishes, let us sit silently and now connect with the stillness of our being. Let us connect with that silent, silent space. The beautiful soul that I am, the part within myself. Sorry, I just need to close the, the door. I So, um, relaxing, becoming centered, and let us bring, invite the energy of the divine into our presence, into our atmosphere. His loving presence, his purity, as we bring that purity and love into our presence, into the atmosphere, clearing out all other energy. and allowing the atmosphere to be full with that nurturing, powerful, and safe energy. And in this silent space, we want to send all our good wishes and love to all those that are connected with us. We also want to really, really emerge the love from the divine to all the souls that did their beautiful service this afternoon of shining and being present with God's love and God's light and displaying and bringing into the actions, into their thoughts, into the words, into the actions of each one that contributed to this beautiful service, what it means to let the hands do the work, let the heart be with the one beloved.
even the one that held the space, our sister Dipti, shining and being present with God's love and light. and making every session, every program, every individual, making each one special and emerging the very best from each one. Thank you, God, for giving us the strength. And thank the hands that prepared all the dishes this afternoon, but more so shining with your beautiful love and light. Each one will catch that beautiful vibrations. Om Shanti. A beautiful evening of blessings. And enjoy the rest of the weekend. Be well, be safe. Thank you. I hand you over to Sister Dipti. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Shirley. A special thank you to all those that really prepared for this afternoon, because what you see is just the end product, but I know that it takes time to prepare for this. So to Sister Belinda, to Sister Indrani, to Sister Shirley and my brother Mirko, and in all the places, there were so many hands behind the scenes. So to all of you, thank you very, very much. And to all our participants, I think, you know, I'm sure you experienced today, not just as a day of learning certain uh, recipes, but rather a beautiful opportunity to be in an environment that supports high state of consciousness. And somebody asked a question and uh, we weren't able to reply to it while the session was on, but I just want to give you the answer because I know that you have this request that whenever they see the Brahma Kumaris making any meals, they do not see the food have onion and garlic. So the question had come up, why don't you cook with onions and garlic? So there are many scientific reasons why onion and garlic um, has a defragmenting energy on the brain waves, which allows for delayed responses. And so if as a yogi, you want to be focused and you want to be clear and you want to hold an energy that creates a high energy flow, then as a yogi, avoiding onions and garlic in your diet is very, very essential. But also we understand that food is energy. So there's three types of energy, food that has low energy, food that has medium energy, and food that has high energy. And so we see that foods that have high energy which we call sattvic food, and food that has very low energy, which is called tamsic food, has a deep, deep effect on my state of body and state of mind. So as we're trying to elevate our consciousness and create a high state of being, um, you are encouraged to eat food that has high energy, and therefore foods that do drop our energy and have that low frequencies avoided. Many of you who come from the Eastern background do know that whenever there's a very special occasion 
and in the original ways of cooking, food that was cooked as prasadam never had onion and garlic inside because that kind of food is not called sattvic food and it's not food that can be offered to the gods and goddesses. So there's many scientific reasons and um, we're very happy to spend time to explain to you further. But just today in nutshell, um, we want to create clarity of mind. We want to create a space of energy of focus and not allow the wrong type of stimulation, stimulation and aphrodisiac energies to be activated. And that is why as a yogi um, who wants to create a beautiful state of consciousness, we do not use food that has onion and garlic. So this was just a last minute answer to somebody who was very determined to know today why the Brahma Kumaris don't have onions and garlic. So anyway, I'm sure that we learned a lot. We understood many aspects and we will take that same fragrance into our home. And this evening, as you walk into your kitchen, realize this is a place where, as Sister Shirley said, the hands do the work, but the heart stays with the beloved. So that the food that you cook for your family will be food that warms their hearts and brings each one of us to a higher state of energy and consciousness. Thank you so much. Om Shanti. Have a powerful day. Thank you. Please take note, this is the program that starts Monday, a very powerful program, Monday morning at 8 a.m., nurturing the self with three very special yogis, Sister Aruna, Sister Belinda, and Sister Fatima, starts this coming Monday at 8 a.m. You need the rest please please put your name in the chat your emails in the chat for the recipes that would be available